Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar on physical literacy through fundamental movements, recreation, and sport, hosted by Parks and Recreation Ontario. Today's webinar is brought to you through the On After School project led by the Leisure Information Network, also known as LIN, and supported by the Public Health Agency of Canada and the Ministry of Tourism, Culture, and Sport. My name is Jennifer Peltier, and I will be your technology host for today's session. Should you have any tech questions at all during today's webinar, please enter them into the chat pod, and I'll do my best to keep up. We have a jam-packed webinar today. Again, so I'd like to jump right into it and introduce our speaker who is joining us from PHE Canada. Amber Meir graduated from Brock University with an honors degree in physical and health education. She also graduated from her Master's of Arts in Applied Health Sciences from Brock University. During her study, she, has a, she was a teaching assistant for the physical education and kinesiology department and taught movement and pedagogy. Goji Labs to undergrad students. Amber has developed and presented workshops from various organizations. She has been presenting workshops for PHE Canada specifically for the past several years, providing workshops on physical literacy and student leadership to elementary, high school, and post-secondary students. Amber has also worked with Parks and Recreation in Ontario on providing some workshops in the past through the uh, Ontario After School Collaborative Grant. So I'd like to uh, thank Amber for being on the call with us today and presenting, and welcome her. Welcome, Amber. Uh, thank you, Jennifer, for the introduction. Um, and I guess, as Jennifer mentioned, we'll just jump in and get started. Uh, just to let you know, I will ask a couple questions through the poll um, technology as part of this webinar, but also uh, through the hand function. So uh, everyone will, I'll, I may just ask everyone to raise their hand just to give us an idea of uh, some of the, the information that we're looking for. It'll just help uh, move through and make the webinar a little bit more interactive. Um, and uh, if any time, if you have questions that pertain to what I'm speaking to, uh, feel free to also add it to the chat. I have one of my other colleagues, Sasha, who will uh, try and help uh, answer any questions as we go through. But if you have any major questions at the end, uh, we will leave time for that. So to get started, uh, if everyone could just raise your hand if you have heard of Physical and Health Education Canada before. Excellent. So it looks like most of you have, as we're going through the list. I'll just give you a brief introduction uh, to give you a little bit of perspective as to what we're chatting about today. So established in 1933, PHE Canada works closely with provincial and territorial physical and health education associations, educators, and partner organizations from coast to coast to deliver policy standards, resources, curriculum support tools, and relevant information. PHE Canada is committed to setting quality standards for school-based physical and health education programs in Canada, and developing tools that support those standards. Peach Canada strives for ongoing collaboration between grassroots, provincial, national, and international stakeholders in the development and delivery of services and programs. Peach Canada also advocates for and advances quality physical education and health education programs to enable students with the opportunity to develop the knowledge, skills, and attitudes needed to lead physically active and healthy lives now and in their future. Physical and Health Education Canada believes in the importance of leadership development for both children, youth, and professionals, in the importance for demonstrating leadership and engaging in partnerships and collaborations, and it also believes in the principles of the Canadian Sport for Life and Long-Term Athlete Development Plan. So looking at today's webinar uh, outline, we will look at specifically what is physical literacy, what are fundamental movement skills, what is a long-term athlete development plan, strategies for assessing physical literacy, and the tools and resources that are available through PHG Canada to help support the relationship between the long-term athlete development plan, physical literacy, and sport. So there are many types of physical literacy, or literacy, sorry, that we are familiar with. There's language literacy, numeracy, and music literacy, to just list a few. So just with all types of literacy, it is important to learn the fundamental concepts before attempting more complex activities. If we look at language literacy, for an example, children learn letters and words, and then how to read and write sentences before beginning to complete more complex uh, strategies, like novel studies. 
Just as the English language literacy prepares and enables our children and youth to navigate situations such as education, the workplace, public transit, physical literacy can equip our children and youth with the tools to establish and maintain a healthy, active life. So to help give us a better understanding of your physical literacy knowledge before we begin, can you please complete the following poll? So as the results are coming in, uh, it looks like most of you are divided between fundamental movement skills uh, and all of the above. And I'm, uh, I'm just going to move forward with this one. So as you're still plugging it in, um, I'm just going to define uh, physical literacy as PEG Canada. Sees it. So the ability to move with competence and confidence in a wide variety of physical activities in multiple environments that benefit the healthy development of the whole person. So with that last poll, a lot of you mentioned or uh, selected things that were part of the definition. However, the correct answer would have been all of the above. So let's gain a deeper understanding of physical literacy through looking at some of the main characteristics of this definition. So physical literacy should be based around the individual learner and their progression, and ensuring that you are meeting their needs and developing their skills at their own pace. Individuals can be afforded equal opportunities to enhance their physical literacy by basing competence on an individual scale rather than against a population norm. The second key characteristic is competence and confidence in a wide variety of physical activities. It is important to develop basic skills that can be transferred to multiple physical activities and daily life. Exposing the children to a wide variety of activities and environments will help enable them to feel confident and competent engaging in a variety of activities beyond your programming. For example, fitness activities, martial arts, hiking, swimming, dance, gymnastics, skating, yoga, cycling, outdoor pursuits, and group activities all provide children and youth with different skills that are necessary in a wide variety of activities. Looking at multiple environments, it is also important that children are exposed to a variety of environments, including land, water, snow, and ice. Again, this will help enable them to feel confident and competent engaging in a variety of activities. And finally, the healthy development of the whole person. Physical literacy is not just possessing strong physical skills and abilities, as having intense knowledge of a small set of sports-specific skills doesn't make you physically literate. Physical literacy encompasses the whole self the continual development of cognitive, affective, and movement aspects of the children and youth. For example, this includes the development of confidence and self-esteem, sensitive interaction with others, knowledge and understanding of the importance of physical activity and maintaining health, teamwork, sportsmanship, respect, etiquette, problem-solving, critical thinking, tactics, strategies, and understanding rules. So what does this all mean? Individuals with higher physical literacy levels have the skills and confidence to move in any way they want, can show their skills and confidence in lots of different physical activities and environments, and use their skills and confidence to be active and healthy throughout their lives. So let's take a look at fundamental movement skills. Fundamental movement skills are basic movements and the foundation of physical activity. They are essential to the development of effective motor skills and to the application of these skills in a wide variety of physical activities. There are three fundamental movement skills categories. The first is locomotion or traveling. This is when the body moves from one point to another. For example, walking, running, skipping, hopping, galloping, chasing, fleeing, or dodging. The second category is stability. The body remains in place but moves around its horizontal or vertical axis. This includes bending, stretching, twisting, turning, rolling, balancing, transferring weight, curling up, landing from a jump. The third and final category is object manipulation. This involves giving force to objects or receiving force to objects and is broken down into three subcategories, sending, receiving, and retaining. Examples of this category include throwing, 
catching, collecting, kicking, punting, dribbling, volleying, and striking. It is important to remember that when fun and enjoyment are part of skill development and physical activity, children are more likely to develop positive attitudes towards healthy and active living. Fundamental movement skills enable individuals to participate across a wide variety of activities, as each skill can be transferred across multiple activities and environments. For example, if you can learn to throw efficiently and effectively, you can play baseball, softball, bowling, soccer, goalball, footy, and rugby. This picture illustrates the impact of learning fundamental movement skills on continual physical activity participation, as fundamental movement skills serve as a foundation for more complex forms of movement skills, specifically sports skills. For example, if Sally has never learned to kick or dribble a ball and attempted to play soccer in her high school phys ed class, she is likely to not be as successful, confident, or comfortable as the other kids who have learned these skills previously. In the development of physical literacy, it is important to provide an environment that allows for children and youth of all ability levels to feel success, be optimally challenged, and progress their skills. Here are three strategies to providing an inclusive environment. Providing choice to students helps them to develop their skills at their own level and pace without feeling embarrassed or incapable. For example, setting up a target activity and allowing students to choose what size of ball and what implement they will use as well as the distance from the target can remove pressure and insecurities as everyone will have different objects and different lengths. Posing a physical activity question and allowing participants to explore different ways to determine the answer provides them with a sense of creativity, responsibility, critical thinking, and a better understanding of their body's abilities and movements. For example, ask students to balance on two bases of support. Children will try a variety of different body parts and positions, challenging themselves to think of new ideas and movements. Creating activities that involve self-competition as opposed to peer-based competition allows students and children to create personal goals and attempts to achieve higher than their own record as opposed to being better than a classmate. For example, ask students to see how many times in a row they can hit the ball off the wall, let it bounce, and then hit it again for one minute. Instead of announcing the number to the class, ask them how they think they can improve their own score, and then have them try this tactic to see if they can beat their own previous score. The Long-Term Athlete Development Plan is a model which has been designed with both high-performance athletes as well as the general population in mind. There are seven stages within this model. The, the development of physical literacy is the foundation of the model, encompassing the first three stages of development, active start and fundamentals, and learning to train. The next three, three stages are focused on high performance athletes. These include training to train, training to compete, and training to win. This, these three stages encompass a very small percentage percentage of the entire population. The final stage is active for life. And although these sections are divided by chronological age in the model, it is the developmental age of the children and youth that you are working with that you should focus on. Developmental age is of higher importance as not all individuals within your teams and or programs will be at the same physical ability level at the same time due to their different experiences and maturational age. For the purpose of this presentation, let's take a look at the following four key stages. Active start, fundamentals, learning to train, and active for life. The first phase is active start. Children should be introduced to unstructured active play that incorporates a variety of body movements. This will help them to develop the ABCs of movement, agility, balance, coordination, and speed. An early active start enhances development of brain function, physical coordination, growth motor skills, posture, and balance, as well as helps build confidence, social skills, emotional control, and imagination while reducing stress and improving sleep. Children in the active start stage should see physical activity as fun and exciting part of everyday life. The second stage is fundamentals. At this phase, children should learn all fundamental movement skills, building their overall motor skills. 
Young children need to participate in a variety of well-structured activities that develop basic skills. Children should participate in a fun and challenging multi-activity environment. Exposure to a variety of sports and physical activities will develop interests and motivation while avoiding burnout through premature specialization. The third and final physical literacy phase is learning to train. During this phase, children should learn all fundamental sports skills and build on their overall sports skills. Emphasis should still be on general sports skills suitable to a number of activities. Greater amount of time should be spent training and practicing than competing. It may be tempting to specialize at this age through excessive single sport training or early position specialization in team sports. This should be avoided. Premature specialization promotes one-sided development and increases the likelihood of injury and burnout. The final and end stage of the long-term athlete development is active for life. This is the final destination for all Canadians, such that they remain active in sport and physical activity for life by developing physical literacy. The basics of physical literacy will provide individuals with the tools to understand the importance of daily physical activity and they will want to continue staying active for life through lifelong participation in competitive or recreational sport and physical activity. Presently in Canada, many, if not most, participants in the active for life stage are not physically literate due to the fact that the Canadian sports system does not consistently develop physical literacy for all participants. A primary goal should be to improve the situation. I just wanted to bring your attention to the activeforlife.ca website at the bottom of this slide. Um, it is a great tool to help parents uh, and uh, practitioners understand physical literacy, fundamental movement skills, and how to get their children involved in physical activity. Uh, to help give us a better understanding of the amount of physical activity the children and youth we work with receive, please complete the following poll. Excellent, thank you for providing us with that information. And it, from uh, the results, it looks like most of you, uh, most of the children and youth that you work with are not receiving uh, the 60 minutes a day that's recommended. Um, and we'll talk about a little bit more how we can uh, try and help programmers and students themselves actually receive the 60 minutes a day. So looking at these three sectors, recreation, organized sport, physical education, and school sport, um, we all are focused around the same broad category of physical literacy and physical activity. However, we, each sector seems to have their own unique approach to both of these concepts. This diagram illustrates that all sectors need to start working together to share ideas, resources, and knowledge to provide a consistent message and development of physical literacy. So how can we achieve this goal? Using the long-term athlete development model, it provides a framework that meets the needs of all of these sectors. This means that all sectors have a shared responsibility for the success of the long-term athlete development model and the development of physical literacy. Here are two successful examples of initiatives involved with physical literacy and the long-term athlete development to give you a sense of the whole picture. Looking at universities, students, and physical education and kinesiology, uh, these students are learning about fundamental movement skills and physical literacy, with the development of physical literacy courses becoming more and more available to undergrad students. Another example is that all sporting organizations within Canada have adopted the long-term athlete development model and have uh, created a document outlining how their sport development programs follow the long-term athlete development model.
Uh, I'm just going to ask another uh, question, if you could all raise your hands again. I just wanted to know who has assessed fundamental movement skills in their programming before? And at the same time, we can also, sorry, there's another, there's a poll as well. Uh, so how confident are you in assessing physical literacy as well? So if you could answer both. So if we look at the poll first, uh, just while everyone's still raising their hand. Um, so in the how confident are you in assessing physical literacy, uh, it seems that some of uh, the majority, 14 percent, 15, um, are somewhat confident. Um, and then another 10 of you are very confident, and then some not at all. So in the next section, we're going to look at some different tools that can help you assess um, fundamental movement skills, but more specifically also physical literacy. And then looking at uh, the hands, uh, so it seems about maybe a third of you have uh, assessed physical, or sorry, fundamental movement skills before. Um, and so I just wanted to take a quick look at uh, what it means to assess fundamental movement skills. So when we're assessing fundamental movement skills, there are two main concepts to include as an evaluator. Uh, the main observation and feedback. So in order to analyze a participant's performance effectively, the evaluator needs to plan how they will observe the movement. To do this, the evaluator must decide what to look for and how, when and where to observe the skill performance or the movement. After the observation, the second key component for the evaluator is feedback. So the second thing the evaluator should do is provide feedback to their participants based on their observations. An important role is skill analysis the ability to look at a participate, evaluate what is seen, and know what to do next. Evaluators need to have the ability to give advice to participants on how to properly perform fundamental movement skills. So going back to the physical literacy poll, um, I just want to ask another question uh, related to physical literacy. So who has assessed physical literacy in their program before? Not just fundamental movement skills, but the entire concept of physical literacy. Okay, again, about a, a third of you, I would say. Um, so what we're going to do in this next section is take a look at two tools that can help you observe, analyze, and provide feedback on your children and youth physical literacy. So again, not just on the fundamental movement skills, but on the entire concept of physical literacy. So the first tool was created by Physical and Health Education Canada. It's a free online tool to help assess student physical literacy. So students and teachers complete assessments in four categories. Two categories are teacher assessed and focus on movement skills and fitness skills. Two categories are student self-reported and focus on physical activity participation and physical activity behaviors and attitudes. Assessments are completed twice a year, at least in September and in June. And students are provided with individual feedback report in the design of a passport. And this passport is meant to help students reflect and set goals. Teachers are provided with class feedback report, and this is meant to help them shape their programming and to meet the needs of their students. Passport for Life provides numerous strategies and resources to help improve physical literacy, knowledge, and competence for both teachers, students, and their parents. Uh, and Passport for Life was designed to connect with the health and physical education curricula across Canada. The four categories of Passport for Life are active participation, living skills, fitness skills, and movement skills. Active participation and living skills assess an individual's participation and behaviors within, physical, uh, within their physical activity. And then the fitness skills and the movement skills look specifically at the, um, co the competence of the uh, six particular skills. Um, with Passport for Life, students are not given one final uh, grade for their physical literacy. Uh, they're given uh, results on each of the individual four sections. Uh, Passport for Life is also not a, um, a report card mark. It is meant, again, for, as a learning tool for students and for teachers. If we look 
quickly at the student and class passport. Each student receives an individual overview of their assessment results. Students receive results for each component, and there is no aggregate physical literacy score. Teachers can use the student passports to engage the students, their parents, and the class in discussions about goal setting for enhancing physical literacy. There is also a goal setting lesson plan specifically for um, uh, using the passport and uh, engaging the students in further learning with uh, their results. Um, the class passport is a collection of all the student data to be used to help understand and present information about the class as a whole. It should be used to guide lesson planning and address physical literacy gaps in your class. So Passport for Life, the main concept is that you do these assessments in September and then uh, the feedback is given as part of the passport. And then the teacher and student plan from September until June when the second assessment is done. Uh, they plan goals that they would like to um, attain um, and use the information on the website to develop skills further. Um, and then again assessment in, in the spring uh, to see what the improvements are and if they have met those goals or not. The second tool is the Physical Literacy Assessment Tool for Youth. So PLAY stands for Physical Literacy Assessment for Youth. It's a series of physical literacy assessment tools for coaches and after school practitioners that were developed by Canadian Sport for Life to determine the level of an individual's physical literacy. So these are directed at individuals age 7 and up. The PLAY tools determine gaps in physical literacy development and provide calls to action to help improve in these areas. There are six components of the play tools. Play fun is used to, by a trained professional to assess a child in 18 fundamental skills and tasks such as running, throwing, kicking, and balance. Play basic is a simplified version of play fun that can be administered quickly by a trained professional in movement analysis to provide a snapshot of a child's level of physical literacy. Play self is used by children and youth to assess their own physical literacy. Play parent is used by parents of school-aged children to assess their, their child's level of physical literacy. And play coach is used by coaches, physiotherapists, athletic therapists, exercise professionals, and recreation professionals to record their participation of a child's level of physical literacy. Finally, play inventory is a form used to record and track a child's leisure time activities throughout the year. Passport for Life uh, terminology and assessments are consistent with the Canadian Sport for Life Physical Literacy Assessment Tools for Youth, as well as the Long-Term Athlete Development Model. It was important in the development of both these tools that uh, the various sectors involved uh, had aligned uh, communications and messaging. So if you do look at the Passport for Life and the play tools, you will notice that a lot of the rubrics um, and the terminology used are consistent uh, and um, have the same uh, progression and development throughout. PG Canada has developed a number of resources to help coaches, instructors, and educators implement the concepts of the LTAD within their practices. These resources specifically focus around the Active Start, Fundamentals, Learning to Train, and Active for Life phases of the LTAD. So specifically these two sections here. To help us gain a better understanding of, your, of the practical implementation of the long-term athlete development, please answer the following poll. So from the results, it looks like m most of you have sometimes implemented the LTD into your programming, um, but uh, the second highest number would like to in the future, uh, and then with some of you uh, doing it all of the time. So what we're going to talk about in this next section is actually giving you some tools and strategies 
uh, that will maybe help you implement uh, physical literacy into your programming. Uh, so, PT Canada has developed a section of their website devoted to helping educators and coaches understand the, and implement physical literacy into their programs. So under the section on the website, there are practical strategies for fostering the development of physical literacy in children and youth. So I don't know if you can see in the picture, but under on the right-hand side where it says, what is physical literacy, physical literacy education strategies, fundamental movement skills, physical literacy checklists, information for parents, and support tools. I wanted to draw your attention specifically to the physical literacy education strategies, as you can see the picture up there. Um, each letter of the acronym EDUCATION represents a different evidence-based strategy to help develop physical literacy. Under each strategy is a video podcast that describes research-based evidence supporting its link to physical literacy and provides various activities to be used within the program. For each strategy, there are also practical ideas and assessment strategies found on the bottom of the web page. So if you go onto this section and you click on any of the letters, um, about a 15-minute video will pop up. Uh, describing different research uh, and, and information as to why that was selected as one of the physical literacy education strategies. But it also gives you practical resources and tools as to how to implement that within your programming. And these you can download uh, or stream, sorry, off the website, or you can also download them uh, through iTunes as a podcast, and they're completely free. A second resource is uh, the Fundamental Movement Skills Series. So this series aids in teaching fundamental movement skills and sports-specific skills in an effective, fun, and interactive manner through the use of both print handbooks and online video collection. The series is designed to enable the development of physical literacy as a solid foundation for supporting long-term sport and physical activity participation. There are seven books in the series, Active Start and Fundamentals, Active Start and Fundamentals for Children with a Physical Disability, Active Start and Fundamentals for Children with de Developmental and or Behavioral Disabilities, Learning to Train, Beyond the Fundamentals, Alternative Activities and Pursuits, and An Educator's Guide to Teaching Fundamental Movement Skills. And within these resources, it breaks the fundamental movement skills down and provides you with teaching cues and tips as to what those fundamental skills should look like, as well as some um, tips for um, improving fundamental movement skills within the children and youth. It also provides um, very simple and practical fun activities that relate to each fundamental movement skill. Um, when you get to Beyond the Fundamentals, th this book is divided into game categories. Um, and then alternative pursuits and activities uh, are the more non-traditional sports, so looking at uh, cycling, uh, skiing, rowing, canoeing, kayaking, hiking, uh, dance, yoga, and provides activities and information on what, what those look like as well. The next resource is uh, the Physical Literacy Online Video Collection. This is a free online video resource that includes visual demonstrations and verbal cues to 12 fundamental movement skills. Uh, each fundamental movement skill has a video demonstrating the same skill at different developmental ability levels. So there's three stages. There's the early, intermediate, and mature. And this allows you to see what the skill would look like um, in each of those stages. The videos can also be viewed from two angles, from the front, as you see on the screen here, and then at the side. The videos can be paused, freeze-framed, and or printed. And they can also be used, utilized as a form of assessment. So for example, uh, you can print the photos of a specific fundamental movement skill, as you see here. Um, and it can be used to assess an individual skill technique. Or a checklist can be created highlighting key points within each fundamental movement skill. So if you look at the screen, uh, there's a, a picture of a young uh, boy, and he's dribbling. So uh, where each of the little triangle marks are on the, the time frame, uh, you can freeze the screen. And it'll, it'll have words written beside it and a description of what it looks like. Uh, you can, this is what you can actually print, and it'll come out as a PDF. And it'll have all the uh, words on the screen that you see written, as well as a description uh, of the skill characteristics beside the video. You can also watch it uh, in full length, so you can press play and watch it, or you can uh, watch it in single freeze frames. PG 
UC Canada has developed the Move, Think, Learn resources to support the development of physical literacy through the framework of teaching games for understanding. These resources include tools to allow students to actively explore, discover, and create their own knowledge and understanding through concept-based learning to implement physical literacy through the lens of a sport case study. So with these resources, uh, we partnered with uh, national sport organizations uh, to create activity resources for teachers that they could um, help students learn a sport through the concept of teaching games for understanding. Um, and what that does is it, create, it puts into game strategies, or categories, sorry, uh, with like strategies and tactics. And you teach tactics and strategies uh, through the sport that they can then transfer to other games in that same category. So for example, with ringette, you teach tactics like moving into open space or advancing the, the ring up the field. And then those strategies and tactics can be related to something like soccer, where again, you want to move, advance the ball up the field, or you would like to move uh, into open space so that you can receive a pass. So the 10 sport uh, NS, national sport organizations that we worked with uh, was ringette, soccer, badminton, canoe kayak, cycling, handball, archery, squash, and softball. And these resources will all be available free uh, online uh, in the fall of 2014 on our website. The next resource is the Active Living After School Initiative. And it was designed to assist after school program administrators in delivering high quality programs and experiences to all participants. With a focus on moderate to vigorous physical activity and healthy eating, the objective of ALAS is to help ensure that all children and youth, regardless of their age, ability, gender, culture, or socioeconomic status, have the basic skills necessary to become healthy and enjoy lifelong physical activity. The ALAS initiative includes a how-to guide and an activity equipment kit to help administrators in support of their program. The how-to guide provides organizers with information on a variety of after-school programs related program-related matters, including community connections, funding, program planning, promotion, and much more. The ALAS Activity Kit will provide after-school program organizers, organizations with a wide range of equipment and resources to help them implement a variety of quality program activities. PG Canada has partnered with the Canadian Tire Jumpstart Program, allowing qualified after-school programs to receive an ALAS resource fully funded. So if you go to our the website that's listed there, um, and you, there will be information on the website, but through Jumpstart, you, uh, if you do qualify, you're able to receive an um, uh, equipment kit with the resource, uh, about an $800 um, package for free uh, if you are um, eligible through the Jumpstart program. To promote the value of physical activity to parents and guardians and te teachers and leaders, as well as engage them as key decision makers in the healthy living behaviors of children and youth, PG Canada created a new program titled Ready, Check, Go. The Ready, Check, Go program is a tool designed to track levels of physical activity and includes a workbook for children and youth, a parent guide, and a leader guide. The participant workbook helps participants understand the importance of physical activity, the amount of physical activity they engage in during a regular day provides a framework to help participants set goals. Participants fill out a log of a typical day and identify the different activities they undertook, when and for how long. Once the participants complete this log, they assign intensity values to each activity. Goal setting activity sheets are included to help participants understand the value of physical activity and how they can modify their own behaviors. The Leader's Guide is designed to facilitate the delivery and instruction of the Ready, Check, Go for educators and program leaders. It begins with a brief introduction to the important concepts of physical literacy, physical activity, and its various levels of intensity, and the importance of after-school period for increasing levels of physical activity among children and youth. The Parent Guardian Guide is designed to provide background information for parents about the Ready, Check, Go learning activity, what physical activity is, the importance of res regular physical activity, goal setting suggestions, and the importance of them engaging in their own children's physical activity levels. PG Canada has created six interactive physical literacy workshops for educators, coaches, practitioners, etc., who are interested in helping the children they work with become lifelong participants in physical activity. 
These workshops highlight key concepts that can help educators, coaches, practitioners plan and deliver quality learning experiences that support the development of physical literacy and fundamental movement skills in their students, athletes, and participants. These workshops emphasize the need to develop physical literacy as a solid foundation for supporting long-term sport and physical activity participation. Throughout the workshop, participants engage in physical activities, reflection questions, group tasks that can help them create a positive and developmentally appropriate learning environment for their students and athlete participants. Participants will learn practical strategies and engage with tools that will help them develop their student athletes and participants' physical literacy levels that are necessary to acquire the knowledge, skills, and attitudes to lead healthy, active lives and enjoy success in all levels of sport participation. And these workshops, we do half-day or full-day workshops. Um, and as you can see from the picture, uh, we like to be as interactive and engage in the gymnasium as possible um, and get, get participants to actually try and develop programming as part of the workshop um, instead of going away and trying to do it once the workshop is over. So uh, just to recap some of the main concepts of the presentation, um, children need to be exposed to a variety of activities in multiple environments to avoid burnout and keep them interested in having fun in physical activity. It is also important to develop the whole child and not just focus on physical skills. Cognitive and effective development are important aspects of meeting athletes and children's needs and keeping them involved in physical activity. Specialization is one of one sport should take place later on in adolescence so that children can develop a wide base of skills and the ability to transfer skills across these environments. The system, so again, um, sport, recreation, and uh, education, encompass all people who interact with children. And it is these people, organizations, programs, and schools that are responsible for the healthy development of the children they interact with. Having these systems work as a whole instead of individually can help provide solid knowledge and experience for these children. Developmental age is more important than chronological age, as bodies develop at different times and phases. To help each child develop and have fun, you need to focus on their current ability level, as opposed to looking at where they should be and, focusing, and forcing them to do things above their ability levels. The long-term athlete development plan is not just about developing high-performance athletes. It's about developing physical physically literate individuals who remain active for life. And that is the end, and uh, we'll open it up for questions. Hi, Amber, Jennifer here. Thank you so much. That was uh, amazing, and there's so much information shared. Um, I'd just like to remind individuals um, that if you want to ask a question, please use the chat pod at this uh, time. And, um, and while you're well that um, this is recorded and the session will be available on the on after school website in the training section um, later on this week and for all of you that that have taken part today.
and have been on the call, um, we will be sending out an email.